to understand how the state design pattern pattern functions we need to look at some sample source code and that's why we are here in the eclipse workspace where i am going into the state project which is a normal java project it's about the same vending machine concept explained in the earlier slides let's go inside this vending machine to understand what's really happening and this is the vending machine and as we explained after applying the state pattern the methods which were described earlier insert rupee turn crank dispense candy eject rupee etc they do not do anything much they simply delegate the calls to a state object so what is this state object as you can see here it's a private data member of type machine state we will look at that little later how is this state object used or initialized as you can see when the machine is constructed in the constructor the first uh, creation of the concrete state object happens so you can see that a new no rupee state is created also some of the initialization of the data members happens over here now once there is no rupee the only way it can change the state is when a rupee is inserted which is which happens when the insert rupee method is called now what does my vending machine do it simply delegates the call to the state object and once the call is complete on the next line the state transition happens that means now the same state data member is initialized to new has rupee state which is another next concrete state and this keeps on happening on each method now there is bound to be some conditionality here when vending machine decides to manage its own state transition as you can see it over here in the dispense candy call there is a if statement if candy is greater than 0 state is initialized to no rupee state you are back with the no rupee state but if candies are exhausted they reach 0 then the state is initialized to a very different state here out of candies and so on and so forth now let's actually look at what these machine states are so we will go to the machine state class and this happens to be an abstract class well it could be interface it could also be an abstract class it is abstract because you can see that none of the methods are actually implemented here they are defined their signature is defined and they seem to be throwing an exception we'll find out why so we'll start looking at the concrete state objects no rupee no rupee extends the machine state which is the abstract class which we just saw and as you can see here out of those four methods the only method which makes sense is insert rupee when you are in no rupee state when a rupee is inserted that is only the valid action the rest of the actions are invalid and hence you can see an exception being thrown with a certain a uh, meaningful message in the insert rupee state the only thing that happens is the money is saved in the state so this dot money is equal to the money passed through parameter and there is a system dot out dot print ln for our information this is what we'll be checking when we run this program so that is about the no rupee state there is a has rupee state here there are two valid actions i can cancel uh, the operation by calling eject rupee in which case the money is returned back or i can turn the crank and go for collecting the candy rest of the methods are invalid then comes candy sold state in this case only dispense candy is the valid action where the candy is actually reduced or is actually returned from here rest of the actions are invalid and finally the last exceptional state is out of candies if the state is reached nothing can be done so all the methods are throwing an error question is how do i use all these classes let's look at main app and the idea here is even though there are so many classes objects getting created as a client of this vending machine you do not worry about it at all you only interact with the vending machine that's it so you construct a vending machine and here you are passing a parameter right now i am passing parameter 1 this indicates that vending machine has to start with only one candy and here we go so out dot printl in candy machine this only dumps the current count of candies and then we are going through certain steps we are inserting a rupee then we are turning the crank then we are dispensing the candy and then we are printing a message as to what kind of candy we have got and then we are repeating this process again all over 
but we know there is only one candy. So, now let us see what happens. So, let me run this program as a normal Java application. There we go. <laughs> 